We're here at Imperial College London, and we're meeting Bob Spence. Bob Spence and Mark Appley from the University of Waikato in New Zealand are the inventors of the bifocal display. You probably use the bifocal display every day, using, for instance, Metro Maps or the Macintosh Dock. So, when uh, designing a bifocal display, do you have any guidelines? Uh, yes, there's, I think there's a number of guidelines. Uh, for example, if you want to bring uh, an item from the outer region, the context region, into the middle so you can read it, uh, don't try and click on it because it's difficult to do that. Just use one of these things called a finger <laughs> because um, that can just very easily bring what you want into the central region and you know it's there. Mm -hmm. uh, another fairly obvious one is uh, for each of the elements, documents, pictures, whatever, that are in this information space, design two versions. One is the version containing detail that you want to look at. The other one is the version that you want to see sideways on. Okay, so if you've got a um, some text, you might just colour it according to who sent it to you, but don't try and put the text there, or even diagrams, unless they're very simple ones. Uh, the other one is use encoding techniques. So the position of uh, an item vertically could mean something. It could be the date that it was generated. Uh, the color could indicate where it came from. Um, the shape could indicate something else. So there's uh, quite a few things you can do uh, to make the bifocal uh, more, more useful. And I'm sure there's lots of other. And if you, sh you should pay some advice to students, professors, people in the industry, what should they focus on? That's an interesting use of the word focus. They should keep context in mind as well. Yeah, ah, <laughs> good one. Yeah. Um, what should they focus on? Ooh. Uh, I think the answer is there's a lot to focus on if you're going to design an interface that's going to be useful. And it's not sufficient just to put some uh, diagrams down. You've got to think about how people are going to use them, what context they want to see, how they're going to move from one part of information to the other, um, how are people going to look at what's on the screen. I mean, there's that very famous video. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? The answer is 13. But did you see the moon looking back? across the screen and nobody notices it. Yeah, I've seen it, yeah. Now that's, that, that, I, I show that to my students mm -hmm. because they think if there's something on the screen people will look at it. No way. So I think when people are designing using the bifocal display there's an awful lot to take into account. Yeah, that's right. So, so which kind of designers or developers of technology would benefit the most from uh, learning about the bifocal display? Everybody. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I th but they've got to be careful, I think. I mean, I, I, I teach a course where we do lots of design, and I think some applications just don't work with the bifocal because it's not doing what you want it to. Some others are obvious applications for it. So I think you've got to look at each design requirement before mm -hmm. you say, bifocal display or some other some other route to giving people what they want. Yeah. 
So, so what is the business value of, of insights into the bifocal display, since everybody can use it? Well, I, I should say incredible. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> to match it. <laughs> uh, you would only find that, that out by um, uh, sort of putting a pilot study together and observe people using it. Because, in a sense, what, what we don't know about the bifocal display is the cognitive and perceptual processes that come into play when you're using it. I don't think we know enough about that. Mm -hmm. But what, you know, why do people want the dis display? What questions are they asking? What do they want to see? I don't think we really know very much about that. I'm not a psychologist, but I can see the need for people to look into that in more depth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it, do you think this is what we're going to see in the future, a focus on, on the psychological part of it? Yes. I, I think uh, I mean, there's, a, there's a lot of applications which use visual displays mm -hmm. and very often in a paper or conference you see somebody say, oh, here's a great display and you think, well, how do you know it's great? How do you know what the people who are using that display are going to do? How are they thinking? Uh, that, I mean, the human visual processing system is incredibly complex, but most people don't use what we know about that when they're designing displays for mm -hmm. the for the computer. And I, I think uh, there's a lot of knowledge already available that psychologists have generated, but we don't use it. So why not? Why don't we see the, the because you need, here? All right. <laughs> Because, uh, to quote the title of a paper I've got coming out, you need a broker. Mm -hmm. A broker who looks at psychology literature, hopefully talks to psychologists, and says, right, I think that's what we need to improve that display or application. Yeah, And th that's what I now get involved with a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the human visual processing system is incredible, and it's... Uh, got a lot of surprises um, and it helps to know something about that when you're actually designing yeah. a display. Yeah. So not many psychologists are designing yeah. right now. Um, I'd like to see psychologists uh, do, do things the other way, find out how people are going to interact with computers and mm -hmm. say right it's worth attacking that problem, it's worth studying what people do uh, when they have a bifocal display. Mm -hmm. uh, what are they doing well, what are they doing badly, etc. Uh, on the one hand you've got your psychologist, on the other hand you've got your, let's call them interaction designers. Mm -hmm. uh, you want people in the middle who use this to do that. Mm -hmm. And who en encourage psychologists to study various features so we can design better displays. Or interaction yeah. designers yeah. studying psychology. That's a difficult one. Because <laughs> the, the, they're so busy designing yeah. displays. Mm -hmm. uh, understandably, they don't. In fact, one thing we try to do is to say, in effect, uh, to the interaction designers, look, you know, don't worry about the, the psychology and the perception, but these are useful guidelines if you're going to design, say, a bifocal display. So we try and uh, hide the need to understand the psychology mm -hmm. and perception. Yeah. If you want to know more about the using the bifocal display, you can read uh, Bob Spence and Mark Apple's chapter on the bifocal display at interactiondesign.org. And you can also find more videos like this and chapters written by other inventors and thought leaders at Interaction Design. Thanks for watching.